What is up guys, today we'll be talking about TBC investments and just in case you guys haven't seen my TBC investments videos yet, I will leave links to those in the description down below, as I have covered the multiple items you can buy in Classic WoW that will either retain their value or actually go up in value for TBC. And today I want to talk about when I'm planning to sell these items. The thing about investing in Classic WoW items, even just to retain your gold value, is that inflation from quests and daily quests in TBC will make your current gold worth less after a while, so by putting your gold into items that are still relevant might be more worth it. For example, if you have 1000 gold right now, that 1000 gold will give you a lot more purchasing power than it would by the end of TBC, when the economy has been inflated by millions of gold from completing quests. So let's go through some TBC investments, and when I plan on selling them. I'll start off with the most controversial one I think, and that is Large Brilliant Shards. These are used throughout TBC because they are used in crafting Brilliant Wizard Oils, which are used throughout TBC by raiders. I believe every single caster except Shadow Priest will use these, but I could be wrong on that. That being said, Large Brilliant Shards will also be pumped into the TBC economy by Protection Paladins farming Stratholm and Scholomans, and after speaking to Dr. Kale, a popular paladin content creator, you apparently get between 2 and 3 large billion shards per run, so in this case you have to consider how big the demand for these will be for raiders, and the supply that those paladins will bring in over time. Based on the raiding difficulty of Classic WoW and how difficult raids look to be on the TBC beta, I do believe people will be spending more time in raids in later content phases of TBC Classic, because just like in Classic WoW, you will still be doing raids from your previous phases in the last phase of Classic TBC as well. Basically, what I'm saying here is that in Phase 1, a person might spend 6 hours per week inside raids, while in Phase 6, that same person, or well, Phase 5, that same person might spend 24 hours per week inside raids, and this means that person would need a lot more consumables in Phase 5, when he spends more time in those raids. That being said, since phase 5 happens late in the game's life cycle, paladins will also have supplied the market with a lot of large billion shards. That is a lot of theory crafting, but the quick summary is this. I think the demand will be a lot higher in phase 5 than phase 1, but the supply will also build itself up over time. Personally, I would either sell these in a TBC pre-patch, as some people will stock up on consumables they need before leveling, and use consumables while leveling as well as doing heroic dungeons, and then inside raids as well. You could also sell them during the first couple of weeks of TBC, but in those weeks I think people will be focusing on spending their gold on TBC materials like primals. Basically what I'm saying is that I would sell these now as long as you are making profit on your initial on your initial investment and then I would buy them back in phase 3 or phase 4 and then I would sell them later depending on the supply and the price later in TBC because I think during phase 5 the demand for these should go up substantially. Firebloom is pretty much in the same boat as large billion shards because it's used in the brilliant wizard oils as well as a couple of other popular enchants and consumables that might be useful later on. One big upside of Firebloom compared to large billion shards is that it can't be farmed by protection paladins or any other popular gold farms, but the downside is that it's very easy to farm in general, and it's also very easily bottable. I would however say that Firebloom will probably not skyrocket in value over the lifetime of TBC, simply because it already has a decent price, but it should keep its current price and maybe slowly climb a little bit upwards. Personally, Firebloom is just something I'm holding right now, and I will periodically sell it off as I see profits that I'm happy with, but if you can wait until phase 5 to sell them, that could give you insane profits. Chances are they could skyrocket during the TBC pre-patch as well, in which case I would sell and grab my profits. Ghost Mushrooms are used in crafting the Elixir of Demon Slaying, which are incredibly useful in later content phases of TBC, namely the Black Temple and Sunwell Plateau for the demon bosses, but that being said, pretty much every single raid in the Burning Crusade has a demon boss fight attached to it, and these consumables will even be relevant while leveling as you fight demons while leveling as well. Basically, you can't go wrong when buying these and selling them. If you bought them before the TBC pre-patch, you are pretty much guaranteed profits either way, 
but personally I'll be looking to sell these in phase 5 after inflation has pumped the prices even further and there's some more raid content into the game so the demand will be higher because people will most likely have more raid days due to there being more raids available. Also, if you invested in any type of specific best-in-slot items for raiding or pre-raiding, I think it's obvious that those will sell best during the TBC pre-patch and maybe the first week or two of TBC when people realize they want these items. This includes items such as the Skull Flame Shield, Wolf's Head Helm, the Dark Moon Card Blue Dragon, aka the Beast's Dark Moon deck, or any other items used within PvE or PvP. They will usually be at peak value right before the expansion comes out, or the first 1-2 to two weeks of the expansion itself. Personally, due to the volatility of these items, and for example Skull Flame Shield has gone through the cycle of being good, then getting nerfed, then being good again, then getting nerfed again, and now I believe it's good again according to the TBC beta testing, so based on the volatility of the changes going back and forth, I would sell these items before TBC comes out, as long as you are making profit. Next up, let's take a second to talk about Twink items. Twink items in general have been a little bit weird in Classic WoW, because they drop from places that majors are constantly boosting, but this will change in TBC, as less people will be doing that content, which also means less people or less supply of level 19 and level 29 Twink items. Additionally, TBC opens up a brand new Twink bracket as well, which is the level 39 Twink bracket. Ground mounts are now accessible at level 30, and several items from places like Ulderman get reworked to give different stats in TBC than they do right now in Classic WoW. As a couple of examples here, you have the Miner's Hat of the Deep that has its main stats shuffled and given an unequip effect that increases your damage and healing by 20, so this item is significantly better in TBC than it is right now in Classic WoW. Leg Guards of the Vault also has its stats reworked and also given an unequip effect that increases your attack power by 26, as well as hit rating increased by 5, so this item is also a lot better in TBC. Monolithic Bow is given a straight out damage increase, and it goes from being a 21.9 damage per second bow to a 27.6 damage per second bow, as well as it also gives you more attack power. All of these items will be insanely valuable in the level 39 Twink bracket, and you might even be able to find them fairly cheap right now, because not everyone knows about the fact that these items do get different stats in TBC. That being said, I would not sell any of these until maybe Phase 4 of TBC Classic, because Phase 4 of TBC Classic is looking like the Sulgurub phase of TBC, aka the catch-up phase, and I can't imagine the addition of Suleiman will be enough to keep people busy for months, and that's when people might start looking into twinking. With that being said, the one thing I want to tell you when it comes to investments is to just think of supply versus demand. If I tell you to sell something right now, and everyone listens to that advice, that might crash the price completely, in which case selling now would be a terrible idea, so the best advice if you ask me is to gradually sell off your investments, while you are in a profit range that you are happy with. This obviously depends on how much you have invested, but if you have for example 10,000 ghost mushrooms, you will want to sell those off over a couple of months instead of waiting for a holy price to try to sell them off in a single day, if that makes sense. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video, and if you want to chat more about TBC investments, feel free to leave a comment down below, and I'll do my best to reply. Alternatively, you can also check out my Discord server which is linked in the description, and join the community over there as well. If you enjoyed the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up for the YouTube algorithm, and make sure to subscribe to the channel as well, because I will be uploading a lot more TBC content and you don't want to miss it. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again very soon.